have uh, Kanav Pandit, the Senior Vice President, Group Sales Executive, and Samara, the uh, Director, Signature Research and Content Strategy in the panel. And I am Venkata Subramanian, part of Banking and Payments uh, Client Experience Team, and uh, will be mon mo moderating this discussion. Uh, before we get into the discussion, I will uh, give it to them to introduce themselves. Samara, do you want to go first? Yes, thank you. So I'm Samara Zwanger. I'm based in the UK and I am part of our um, signature research and content marketing team leading reports like the Global Innovation Report for FIS. Venkat, I'm kind of Pandit. I'm based in Singapore. Uh, I'm responsible for sales across the Asia Pacific region. And to break it down, that's 15 markets that we've got hundreds of clients in. Uh, and 10 countries across which we have colleagues from FIS um, in APAC. Great, great. Okay, um, okay. so the uh, the business environment has been becoming like you know, increasingly challenging for many organizations, uh, especially the financial ecosystem is evolving unprecedentedly and understanding the innovation landscape is is key for every uh, firm and business, right? So this year, FIS did a research and published the innovation report. Um, so Samara, like, uh, what is this FIS Global Innovation Report? And how will it help the financial institutions and firms during this uncertain time? So we designed the Global Innovation Report to incorporate what was happening in the larger business environment. So we wanted to look at um, uh, a group of senior business leaders. We surveyed 2,000 or slightly over 2,000 business leaders in nine different countries across eight industries that um, are some of the core industries for FIS. So that's fintechs, financial institutions, capital markets firms, insurers, technology providers, retailers, healthcare, and energy and utilities. Um, and we focused on three areas. So one was how do they see macro risks like uh, access to credit, rising interest rates, things like that? What are their strategies for managing them? Uh, how are they leveraging innovation and new technologies to uh, protect their business and create a competitive edge? And then finally, we wanted to make sure that we gave people, the readers, some real practical advice at the end of it. Um, so we end it with a series of steps they can take to help prepare their business and uh, apply the findings to their own strategy. Thank you. So given the economic uh, condition, like, you know, the current situation that is there and uh, a difficult uh, hiring market around the world, uh, risks are weighing on leaders' minds, right? Um, so based on the survey, what are the most concerning risks that we are looking at? Kanav, do you want to take it? I'll take that, Venkat. So um, in summary, strategic risk, which is what stems from new or increasing levels of competition, difficulty in getting either recruiting or maintaining skilled staff, uh, disintermediation from newly emerging competition, uh, the need to digitalize and so on. So that's strategic risk. And then the secondary being financial risk, which is disruptions to supply chains, uh, economic uncertainty, access to credit, increasing interest rates, increasing costs. So. 63% of our respondents, which is three in five, were concerned about financial risk, and more than half worried about strategic risks. The only exception being technology providers for whom operational risks came top. Uh, operational risk for technology providers being cybersecurity, technology failures. So clearly, the combination of inflation headwinds uh, increasing interest rates, disruptions to supply chains, um, inability to be able to staff across fragmented markets with growing competition. When you put all of this together, the strategic risks and the financial risks were coming out as uh, what is currently weighing on leaders' minds. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, so like, you know, say, okay, so, um, how, how, I mean, like, you know, so the risks will be there, like, you know, any business that we are going to take it, like, um, how does the uh, businesses proactively uh, 
planning to mitigate this risks, uh, especially the uh, strategic and financial risk? How are they planning to mitigate it? And uh, do you think like, you know, innovation is critical to handle this risk? Yeah, so I think the findings show that actually they do understand the role of innovation. Um, almost all of them agree, and we define innovation as the uh, not just sort of technology innovation and new technologies, but really the conception, the development, delivery of new products, services, processes, business models, that they understand it plays a really important role in managing risks. Um, and actually, we asked, and only 2% said it has no role at all. So clearly, they're embracing uh, innovation. The, the most common one was actually technology and systems innovation. That was the most popular choice across the board. Um, but we also did ask about other areas like customer experience that came up several times, especially for certain sectors like financial institutions, uh, as well as all the way through to business operating models, sales and marketing. Um, it was interesting, though, that more than half of them are planning to build or adopt technology and systems uh, innovation to mitigate risk in the next 12 months. Um, so that was definitely the top choice. Uh, yeah, the other interesting, on, yeah, go ahead, Kenneth. I was just going to add some on, on your point on, on innovation. Um, absolutely, I think that rings true. Firms have a variety of goals when pursuing innovation um, and becoming more competitive is a priority. Financial services firms, though, are more driven by protecting their business but at the same time, they also value innovation a lot. Uh, across all the organizations, a number of external factors are also coming into play, including the current economic environment, which is challenged, plus the desire to meet customers' needs and expectations, which is constantly and rapidly evolving. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, um, moving on to the next one. So, I mean, for a better world, right? I mean, so we are we are at a time like uh, sustainability is one of the key things, uh, which I mean every organization play uh, have a big responsibility towards that, right? So and it is one of the emerging domain. Um, so the uh, in 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 the ESG part of it, like you know, is the sustainability and stakeholder pressure uh, around ESG um, is it driving the innovation in some way? Yes, so we did find that uh, they are playing a small role, certainly smaller than a lot of those other risks, for example, but it was a significant one and it came through actually throughout the report. There was one question around, um, you know, what is driving the innovation investments and also, uh, and, and the answer was um, that pressure from stakeholders around it, particularly even more than sustainability as a goal. Um, that was particularly true of uh, financial institutions and energy and utilities, maybe because energy and utilities, you know, has an obvious connection to um, the environment and so on. Um, and we also expect that's going to drive investment in operating models, um, product and service, process and business model innovation in particular. And we think that with regulators turning their attention to ESG, that's just going to gain more ground. So um, is there any any blockers or barriers for the innovation? I'll take that. Um, and I think being in a role where, you know, we're constantly in conversation with clients and constantly, uh, you know, at vantage points, seeing uh, the tremendous desire and the appetite to innovate. Um, and And from personal experience and from what we see in the report, the number one, I would cite to be uh, is constraints on funding or on budgets uh, on on availability of funds to be able to drive uh, innovation. So, from what we're seeing uh, in the report, more than half the firms uh, cited and admitted that limited budgets, uh, financial uh, resources available to them, were inhibiting the investment innovations. That's happening in the backdrop of the tightening in spend due to reasons I've cited earlier, right? Inflation, cost inflation, supply chain issues, uh, an impact in bottom lines that's, that's driving that, that constraint. The other crucial challenge, Venkert, uh, that's being cited is innovation requires skilled resources. And so a lack of in-house expertise, um, resistance sometimes to change from 
employees um, lack of internal data to be able to back up the case for innovation, that also becomes a barrier. Interestingly, resistance from top management is cited also as a barrier to innovation, which we attribute to, especially amongst fintechs, which we attribute coming down to, again, the issues on funding, being able to invest the requisite amount to be able to drive innovation, plus also a concern on risk. Innovation is being able to act on the ideas which are at the, at the forefront of change. And therefore, by the very nature of it, innovation is investing in something that's not yet, may not yet be proven. And so that feeds the concern or the risk element, which also becomes a barrier. Yeah, especially in the fintech space, we need to have the, the regulatory and the, the guardrails need to be there to ensure the consumers and consumers, right? Okay, so good. Um, Absolutely. So we talked about the innovation part and how it is going to help on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, reduce the, mitigate the risks, right? So um, will the new technology drive the change? Um, what is your opinion in terms of the degree of risk versus opportunity using the new technology? Yeah, let me jump in on that one, because just to follow up with what Kenneth said about innovation can bring risk to it, to the situation, right? So can new technology. So we definitely saw um, a dividing point, I suppose, between the sort of more established technologies like cloud computing, um, even as a service, things like that, and uh, even AI, and uh, the more um, leading edge unknown ones like embedded finance, generative AI, which we separated out. Uh, for example, um, open banking, uh, there was a less comfort with those more leading edge ones. Um, it was still relatively low. I think the highest was 10% saying that they saw any of those as a risk more than an opportunity. And that was for generative AI, which obviously is getting a lot of headlines. Um, but there's definitely on the, the more positive side of it an understanding just like with innovation that new technologies including you know more established ones but adopting them can really bring a lot of benefits and opportunity so there was a there was an interesting kind of uh, positive viewpoint on that as well um yeah so so you said it right um so gen ai so uh, my my question is like you know follow up question is like um, so um so that's in everyone's mind so what what is the analysis on the the growth potential of uh, gen ai uh, do you want to take it? Yeah, I'd be happy to take it. Um, it is it is a topic which is definitely coming up a lot. Uh, it's top of mind at uh, at the C-suite, um, at you know organizations that we're working with, and we're seeing that reflect in the report. So, as with anything which is um, you know tremendously high potential, but also very new. Uh, executives see generative AI at this time as more of a risk to the business. Uh, we attribute that perhaps to the relative, you know, the relative infancy. It, it's still new. It's being understood, and also the initial regulatory response, which typically is, you know, heavily weighed uh, and looked at from a regulatory and risk concern, right? So the regulatory response, um, as well as the fact that it's it's still in its infancy, is driving that risk perception. But interesting, interestingly, at the same time, while it's got very low levels of current adoption, it also has very high levels of, you know, response to we do plan to use this. So nearly 90% of all respondents expect to be using generative AI by the end of 2026. That's less than three years out, right? Uh, clearly, we're also seeing respondents are ready to seize the opportunity it brings. Um, for example, to cite a couple of uh, you know opportunities, generative AI can help firms gain deeper insights into consumer behavior across all industries. That's something that is being looked at with tremendous uh, interest, leading firms to be able to be in a position where they can personalize offerings, they can deliver targeted communications. They can improve the customer experience. They can elevate customer satisfaction and then keep more of their customers, right? Another example, Venkat, is when it comes to generating more comprehensive and insightful research report based on generative AI-powered language models. 
So firms are very interested by the potential of saving time and money by, and providing customers with a better experience, uh, more, more uh, I would say, fruitful um, products and services through better research with the power of generative AI. Okay. So now, like, you know, so um, we covered the, the innovation as well as the technology part of it. So it brings us to the end of the discussion. Um, to to how, how do we conclude this? What are the major takeaways from this uh, uh, this innovation uh, report research? So I go first. Um, okay. So we know that businesses are facing a lot of challenges, right? So there's economic change, increased competition. Some of them are, you know, long-term changes and some of them quite new, like, you know, the whole interest rate volatility that we've been seeing in the last uh, half a year or so. Um, they're also, you know, generally there's a consensus there. Most companies feel they're facing more risk than in the past. But also we can see a commitment to um, investing in innovation and also investing in new technologies to help them overcome those risks and, you know, have a more agile uh, business that can really adapt to whatever the future brings. Um, kind of, I don't know, there's more you want to add to that. Yeah, so uh, absolutely, Samara. Uh, there is There are six steps that we've outlined for, you know, all of the industries that we studied, right? And, and let me lay that out. First, would be to systematically assess the short term and the long term impact of macro risks on your business. Uh, number two, identify which innovation strategies can help mitigate the risks, especially to your technology infrastructure, but then also to your business model, to the processes that you're currently deploying and the customer experience, uh, customer experience that you're currently delivering. Third, Consider how the latest technologies can support your innovation strategy uh, in a way that allows you to fully leverage, in a way that allows you to partner to achieve your goals faster. The next would be understanding where the resistance to innovation is coming from and implement awareness, the process of educating you know, stakeholders on the benefits as well as programs that will help take away those road uh, roadblocks or take away the resistance to innovation. The next one would be determining where you need to augment internal knowledge and skills. I spoke about this being a barrier earlier. So understand where you need to augment internal knowledge and skills, uh, and that could happen by training existing staff so that they're able to leverage new technology. Number two, hire new staff, or if not possible, then partner for expertise with firms that already have experience or the skills to be able to, uh, to leverage new technologies. And especially in cases where you are dealing with evolving regulatory landscape, where partnering is typically a good idea so that you have the latest uh, and an evolved view to, to use. Finally, um, as we're dealing with uh, any, any case of innovation, stay close to your customers. So if you build the customer response, which is a, a, a view back to you on their preferences into your strategy, both now and the future, then your decisions, the decisions that you're taking today, will remain guided by your customers. They will remain client-centric, which is very critical. So hopefully that um, adds a lens to, you know, in addition to everything that we've seen, how to go about uh, implementing. Yes, definitely, definitely. And uh, so uh, once again, like Samara and Kanav, thank you so much for your time today and uh, uh, sharing your insights with respect to the innovation report. So um, until next time, thank you so much. Thank you.